If you ever had one of those experiences where you go to the airport, rent a car, hop in it, and it is way nicer than what you're expecting, well, that's relatable to a little bit of the morning that I've had. Let me tell you about it. Hey, I'm James from Soaking Barbecue, and this is the extra large Primo ceramic grill. And I can't believe after nearly uh, two decades of grilling and smoking on Kamado smokers, this is the unicorn that I've never yet had a chance to cook on. And I am very excited for some of the tests that are in store. Now, if you're new to the channel, I don't like to unbox, do a review and say, good, bad, ugly, go buy it, don't go buy it until getting several cooks and months under the belt. So that journey starts right now. But in today's video, I'm gonna share a little bit about the unboxing experience, go over some of the features and the design outside of the obvious oval shape which has always been something that has been really interesting or caught my attention, yet I've never had an opportunity to try it. And since this went together about three hours quicker than what I had budgeted, I'm gonna run to the butcher shop, pick something up, and we're gonna do a break-in burn as well as a first cook. So this Primo XL Kamado fits in a really interesting segment of the market. If we look at features, price as well as overall cooking capacity. So whether you're looking at something like the Weber Summit, the Extra Large Big Green Egg, or what I have behind me, the Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 1 and Series 3, all of those within an inch or so of one another offer about 450 square inches of total cooking space. These are the largest versions uh, of most Kamado brands. The Primo XL comes in a little bit smaller at 400 square inches, but it is laid out in in a very different manner. And so whether you have uh, sort of one of these large ceramic Kamados, even on the large models, getting large racks of ribs without trimming the ends to manage any burning or overdoneness from the heat coming up where there's no heat deflectors or large cooks like a brisket can completely swamp and take up all the space and even the largest Kamados. So I'm really curious to see how the utility of having the four extra inches of length shows up in long and slow cooks like a brisket. So while we're a little bit lower on the overall cooking space, so 400 uh, square inches versus 450 square inches, we're gaining about nearly 17%, I think if I did the math right, rounding up uh, extra length, which should, in theory, that's the argument anyways, come in handy for these long and slow cooks. Also interesting is where this fits from a price perspective. So I'm using Canadian dollars here where I'm based, but the Primo XL comes in a couple hundred dollars below something like a Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 2 and over a thousand dollars below uh, behind me on my left here, the Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 3. In fact, the price is almost nearly identical to something like the Kamado Joe Classic Size Series 3, which comes with a cart, slow roller, as well as heat deflectors. Uh, and that is priced nearly identical to what you get in the Primo XL, with the exception here though, space I mentioned a little bit less before in the Big Joe, it's now 60% larger than the classic size. So really interesting combination of space and price. One other uh, interesting uh, thing of note that I get asked all the time is not only is this designed, it's actually made in the United States of America. And this showed in the assembly process. I don't know if you've ever assembled something, sorry, I'll pick on Ikea, where it comes with included hardware. It looks just like normal hardware. And yes, I can't believe I'm about to geek out on hardware, but it's something as simple as that, where you go to tighten the screw the first time and the bolt strips or the nut strips or the screw breaks in half, you can absolutely tell a difference with quality hardware and this was immediately evident putting this together that this is made exceptionally well just like the uh, golden's cast iron kamado that i've been testing now for a couple months is also made in the United States, but here it trades as novelty for almost excessive curb weight, but it doesn't have a lot of innovative new features. It's smaller, so it's 20 inches, so it's much smaller than either the Primo or the Big Joe, comparable size to the Classic Joe. It's shorter in height, it's exceptionally heavy and incredibly fuel efficient. And I was reminded, almost a time machine going back to some of the briskets that I did a decade ago before I got an offset as a benchmark and started making tweaks to my method to get even better smoking performance out of a variety of Kamado style grills. I've never 
put one of these together before and I budgeted, as I said in the opening clip, three hours because that's normally what it takes for something like a big green egg where you have to assemble all the bands, every little screw that you see on the Komodo grill is assembled. And while that can be tedious, the trade-off or the advantage of that is you become intimately familiar with how the hinge and the bands work. So if you ever have to do a warranty replacement, you know what you're up to. That wasn't the case here. I've often praised the Komodo Joe out of the box experiences. You remove the outer layer of packaging and you're almost done. The same was true with the Primo XL. And I had asked a friend to come help and needed to accelerate that timetable by a couple hours as it took me almost no time to get the point where I had the cart assembled, ready to go, everything removed, packaging material broken down and garbage thrown out and uh, sitting, twiddling my thumbs, waiting uh, till I could lift this into the cart and get ready for our first burn and starting uh, today's video. So as we're getting ready for a break-in fire, and that'll also give me an opportunity to run to the butcher to pick up whatever uh, treats they might have for our first cook, it'll give me an opportunity to do a walk around. Now I've already removed it, but just take note here, I'm gonna put no effort, one finger. This is not an airlift hinge, but this is incredibly light. This is the closest thing to an airlift hinge design I have ever seen. There was a tag that said, try me, new and improved hinge mechanism. <laughs> Absolutely believe it. I need to get or find someone who has a luggage tag and I can show you the difference from series one to series three to what you're getting on the Primo. And this is not as light as the airlift hinge, but it's practically one finger operation. Whereas things like the Big Green Egg XL or even my Big Joe series one with a spring assist or even the Golden's cast iron Kamado, that can get heavy. That is not the case here. Also similar to uh, what is uh, something I've become accustomed to. We have uh, a control tower top light design where we've got our numbers uh, across the top, just like uh, I'm used to on the Komodo Joe design, as well as uh, marked numbers on the bottom. So I often use for measurement, you know, one finger, two fingers, uh, no need. There's actually numbers imprinted on there. So if you're following along uh, at home with a future recipe and I say, you know, vent setting number one, draft door setting number one, uh, you'll know exactly where I'm at, <laughs> not accounting for the differences uh, in my fingers. So like many other Kamados, the interior is much the same where we have our outer base and our dome. Uh, inside we have a ceramic firebox, which is protecting our base from the hot heat uh, that we are producing with our live fire charcoal. There's uh, a charcoal grate that uh, is keeping our charcoal up off the ground so that we can get air nice in between. And then similar to uh, other setups, although in an oval shape, we have uh, racks that can hold either one or both heat deflectors if we want to get maximum elongated protection, as well as our cooking grids that set up uh, above. For uh, interest sake or curiosity sake, I'm going to take a couple of measurements while I have you here in terms of the distance of our heat deflectors to our cooking grates, show you inside, and then head off to the butcher. Okay, everything is nice and shiny and new. Let's check the clearance. Looks like we are sitting right at three inches. Uh, for curiosity's sake, let's go check both the Series 1 and the Series 3 Komodo. Okay, this is my Series 1 Big Joe, and if I try one finger, <laughs> one finger operation, there I got it. Uh, definitely uh, not difficult to manage with one hand uh, outside of one finger, but there is a noticeable difference there. Uh, let's check uh, deflector stone on the charcoal basket to the cooking grate. And it looks like we're about a quarter to nearly a half. So I'll round up to about three and a half inches clearance from our deflector stone. Go to our Big Joe Series 3. The Series 3 is four inches uh, taller than Series 1, 2, but now for the lightest of them all. So the airlift hinge can show you that just one finger able to move that up and down. Let's take a, a measurement. And again, I've gone for the lowest possible position with our deflector stones sitting on the charcoal basket. And here we have six and a half inches. So even though it's four inches taller, it looks like we're gaining three inches inside the cook chamber. So this is giving us uh, the most amount of protection if we wanted distance uh, to not burn the bottom. So it'll be something I, I look for when we get into our first few cooks. So speaking of first few cooks, let's do a break in burn while I head off to the butcher, give it a chance as well for me to show you inside. So these are, are I would call them half moon, but 
half elongated uh, moon. Maybe gravity is working really well on this planet, but they give us the complete width of the grill for maximum uh, protection for long cuts, things like brisket and ribs. And then each of those sit on these removable trays that drop down into the notches in our ceramic firebox. And then just like with uh, Kamado Joe, which comes with uh, a charcoal basket divider, we have an optional uh, basket divider here as well if we want to cook on one side. Since the shape is different, I am going to try the one side. If they have a tomahawk or something like that, maybe we'll try um, just sort of one side, get an indirect zone and a direct zone. Let's grab some charcoal, grab our grill blazer grill gun, fire that up. Drop in one of our deflector holders one of our ceramic heat deflectors set up for our indirect side and assuming they've got a nice steak i'll drop this flip it the other way for a direct sear let that burn off i'll be back and find whatever the butcher has so lucky for us or i should say for me my butcher had one tomahawk left which i uh, quickly took off their hand so i'm going to keep a uh, seasoning straightforward everything uh steak that i've done before are going to be very similar going to use a little bit of a truff hot sauce as a binder uh, any truffle oil this is a uh, pretty expensive so unless you find it at costco or on sale uh, truffle oil is just giving us a bit of a umami binder you don't taste the hot sauce but you do get a little bit of that depth and umami flavor. So substitute if you find one uh, for a better value. Uh, the only change I'm gonna make, instead of using diamond crystal kosher salt, I'm gonna go for the full sea salt. And that's just because we have not had the time to do an overnight dry brine. So to up the salt quantity here, or the uh, perception of salt, uh, diamond crystal kosher salt is the least dense sodium by weight or by volume compared to uh, almost every other salt. So I'm going to go for a little bit of a saltier uh, salt, uh, some fresh cracked pepper uh, using a pepper cannon or any pepper mill uh, will do. I just love this because I make my own rubs as well as uh, some granulated garlic. I'm going to insert a meter probe and set this up and uh, track along for indirect cooking until we reach an internal temperature of 114 degrees Fahrenheit and then we'll transition over to our direct heat side let the flames fly for some grilling but before we do that i want to uh, check while this is still in a package some measurements to compare the area of protection on the primo xl versus uh, other size uh, half moon deflectors from the big joe as well as the classic uh, joe and or large egg i know i don't have a half moon for the classic on hand, but I do have a half moon deflector for the big green eggs that'll give us a, a similar size comparison. Now, will you get plenty of space on 18 inch grills? One of the reasons I've shared before that I've moved up and like the Big Joe size is they all offer a lot of space when you're using the entire grill. But once you start dividing things in half, things get small quick. So I wanna see, uh, does the different shape on the Primo XL, how does that stack up versus the half moon configuration? This is a have them here i can show you that real quick so here are different uh, size heat deflectors for an illustration so not expecting any problem but starting with our big joe you can see something like a tomahawk now that, again ribs uh, brisket will be a little bit larger but there is no issue uh, assorting a tomahawk here and having complete protection from end to end uh, on the big green egg so representing sort of the 18 inch grill size you can see if i just get the tomahawk on so it's not over the edge not over that edge and this one is about a perfect size so you can absolutely still fit this for one steak we start cooking multiple things that's where the cutting the uh, grids in half the soap zone in half or the cast uh, iron accessories in half can get a little bit tight but again no issue for one and then the shape here on the primo xl which nearly 60 percent uh, more total space uh, let's see how we do with the uh, tomahawk and so from an orientation perspective i have to manage the bone so i can gain a little bit more protection around the stake uh, on the front end but very similar to the length issue of the bone on the large uh, egg 
is that uh, I don't have the space here. Now, obviously, if I were to flip like this um, and put the bone to an exposed area and or double up um, my ceramic deflectors, that's where the true advantage of the oval shape will come in. So I think ribs or brisket will uh, absolutely show that. Let me know down in the comments which you would like to see first. But let's get our steak seasoned up. I'll meet you over by the grill. All right, on we go. So I'm completely over the cool side. We don't have any charcoal below here. And then a uh, game plan a, bit, a little bit later on, once we reach internal temperature of 114 degrees, we'll let this fly up and uh, sear off our steak. See you in a little bit for a taste test. All right, our tomahawk has reached an internal temperature of 114 degrees. I'm gonna get that off, let it rest. Next. So let's open up the top vent, let some air fly, rejoin you for the sear. All right, the rain is picking up, so I'm gonna quickly get this on and get take shelter back under the dry enclave of the kitchen area. Well, how's that for timing? I got our tomahawk off just in the nick of time without getting absolutely soaked before the heavier rains blew in. But enough about the weather, let's slice into it, see how we did for our first cook on the Primo XL. Certainly looks pretty. Looks like a nice, even, medium rare. And by even, I mean, what I'm looking for is on the top and the bottom. And we don't have a large gradient from crust to gray, to light pink, to pink, to uh, sort of every color band in between. That looks nice and even all the way through. Let's get a couple slices. A little pinch of fleur de sel, just as again, we didn't salt brine this. And so these will always need just a pinch more salt. Cheers. Wow. Well, I love steak and I love tomahawk. That's my absolute favorite steak. And I love steak cooked over a live fire on a charcoal grill. So this is doing all of those things. Now, how does it compare? A steak that I haven't dry brined that I normally do doesn't give me any information to go into comparisons other than to say this went together so much quicker. I wanted to take advantage of a break and burn and getting my first cook in the books before we lost daylight and the thunder showers rolled in. But let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see. In terms of what's next, I have a couple exciting things in store. So later this spring, I'll be able to announce uh, an idea that I started working on last year and getting some professional scientific engineering minds, much brighter than my own at one of the top, the nation's top uh, science and engineering universities. And part of the reason why I have uh, this Primo XL on site is to do some of these tests on my own, but I'll be turning the keys over and taking the grill to them to do a whole bunch more tests to help me make sense of the shape in terms of its oval design, the clearance, what I think matters versus what uh, some CFD and exciting tests that uh, I'll share a little bit more detail when the time comes to help us understand what actually impacts the performance in terms of having a grill in your backyard, good, bad, and ugly, and how do they all compare in terms of competitive brands. So make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on when you're alerted to see my ultimate uh, Komodo battle later this year with a couple other interesting insights. Before then though, I wanna get a couple more cooks on the books myself, especially taking advantage of that oval design. So let me know, ribs, brisket, whatever you wanna see, that's what I'll cut next. That's it for today. I'm James from Soka Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.